Yo guys, me Patrick Lavar back again with another video. In this video, I'm gonna break down how I was able to make this photogenic render. Again, I'm an exclusive Blender Octane user. My system is down at the moment, so I'm using my older laptop, which only runs cycles. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, so here is the bedroom shot. Now the bedroom shot was uh, very fun because I did a 3D scan using the free app Reality Scan. Literally just, my daughter had this on the bed already. I just threw my phone on the bed. I'm gonna scan it and then boom, that's all I did. So this is my own custom scan. It wasn't the best scan ever, but it got the job done. I could have been a little bit more patient, tried to really, you know, get some more detail, get closer to it. But again, literally, I literally just fired up Reality Scan, just scanned it and I wasn't, I wasn't even planning to use this for the shot the doll actually came out really good and i was like man how could i get a shot off of that and i didn't want to get too close because you can see here on the edge is where it starts to look look a little bit crappy but that's why i use the high the, uh, high depth of field to just hide a lot of that, the crappiness even on the actual the bed here if i get in really close it like really starts to break down you can start to see some uh, it looks good in the in the preview mode but when i go into the render mode it's it's, it's a whole different story let me fire that up already here you can see these lines that's where the, the geometry is breaking and literally cracking i did add a smooth modifier on it to try to smooth it out the smooth modifier seemed like it made it a little bit worse i did shade smooth it it wasn't the best scan to try for this scenario but i made work it looks good here a little bit but there's some areas here like here in the back here you can see that little bit of crustiness and there was another one actually in the shot that i ended up going into photoshop to clean up you won't see it too much in the render view because the blur of the denoiser is hiding a lot of the crappiness because i have a denoiser on right now but there was some breaking up of the geometry that's one reason why i don't like the denoiser too much or too high because it's really hiding a lot of stuff that you don't see until you render it and then once you render you're like where the hell did that come from it's like this denoiser is really hiding a lot of the junk that is the shot here but basically lighting wise the hdri i'm using on this case i think was a different hdri i was using uh one from i think grayscale gorilla assets yeah grayscale gorilla from their creative spaces the majority of the light source on this one again from learning from the cg of uh, gleb alexander lesson that i took the light here the main light is coming from behind from in front of the camera so here is the camera and our light source is coming from up here and it's kind of backlighting everything from there again i have some blockers just to block the here we got some bounce light so a bounce light to, to light up a little bit here on the side and then i have these blockers here just to get some interesting patterns on the actual once it was rendered to get some actual weirdness happening here we can see on the screen just to break up that pattern here again these lines kind of like you're seeing here was because some of those blockers kind of make work in their magic here this area here was a little bit photoshopped clean that up a little bit this area came out really nice like this is literally like almost as close as possible how it really was and again that blocker is adding this shadow area into here because originally the light was just too clean it was too evenly lit so i wanted to add a little bit of contrast again going for the light contrast here and then the dark con or not light but light on this side and dark on this side to get some more contrast to the image so i got that blocker there blocking that out this one here you can see i have the lines for the screen which i went back and did i didn't do it on the other one because i had i didn't do the render again i, I had to re-render it i can't remember if i last in the last video did i show how to make that I don't think I did the how I made the screen LED so let's look at that so the screen LED cool little video I found on YouTube from Lane Wallace again I will have the links down below in the description if you guys want to check it out so I checked out his RGB pixel shader really cool got straight to the point and it was worked out really really awesome and this is basically the workflow that i built from his video here so if you guys want to go ahead and screenshot that again i will try to put these photos also in the google documents down in the description those of you are in the blender octane community you will have the file and you guys can get into the file here is the actual screen element here on top and here is the rgb pixel image that he gives us it's like a little to show you here little rgb pixel image right here that's what that is so we throw that in here and then all we do is split out the RGB. We literally take a sep uh, RGB separate node. We take the red, pipe the red from both of these channels into one, pump the green into this, and pump the blue into this. So we got blue, blue, green, green, red, and red, or red, right? And then we combine them back 
okay and once we combine them back we add them into an emission node over here the actual scaling on this is way smaller you can see it's like 650 by 200 it's super tiny this would change it based on whatever your screen size or whatever look you want if you want more of that look of that screen line look you can crank this up and then this is just your image right here this is my my image that I'm using for my screen and that's the whole setup very simple very clean and there there it is that's how we're able to get those lines in here and that just to get that RGB feel it looks a lot better so let's see if we can render out just a little bit of this here so you can see that RGB effect most modern day cell phone screens you don't see that that old school retro vibe again and I can't wait to I get back into octane again so I can build an octane version of this you see how we're getting these weirdness happening I just love that I love that weirdness that's happening using this so that actually doesn't look too good in the preview it looks a hell of a lot better in the full render view it's a very simple setup and a very simple scene again I would say and then you can see here's the big blocker I have another big shadow blocker here blocking the light and also reflecting light so it's also kind of helping to reflect this area because it was a little too dark here so we got some light bouncing and reflecting over onto that and then again the render settings here you see I got 500 on the render sample settings uh, light path I cut those down 844 two zero two and what else i turned off i turned off refractive got refractive i could have turned that off too you know nothing crazy keeping it very minimal keeping it very simple i will say using this very low 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 in laptop everything really helped me to get back just to the basics like raw basics like i couldn't even bring it into photoshop and do my post processing because the the image camera raw image camera needs a gpu so literally i had to do most of my my stuff right here inside of this little plugin for Dehancer on the website and if this didn't work I was going to literally just export it on my cell phone and use a free version of Adobe Lightroom on my phone literally that's all I was going to do and then I have some other apps on my phone where I can get that photo that old school photo look I can use the super 16 app and that will help me get my photo look on there so being so minimum I'm really looking forward to exploring this workflow using photo scans a little bit more especially my own this was cool this came out okay and it could have been better like I could have got a little bit closer and took my time and got hopefully a better scan on that but I'm really happy how that came out with using the photo scan because to try to build this this I I, I don't know like we're gonna do a cloth sim and to get the stitching in there and like to get the old wear and tear that would have been a hell of a lot of work off a of very minimal system I learned a lot just from doing these challenges and that's why we have these challenges in our community like if you can learn one or two things out of that that's great and you compile that from every every week after week after week your knowledge of just grows more to much more better for me it was nice to get back into cycles because i haven't been using cycles in the last set, almost year now because i've been exclusively in blender octane what i've learned from octane also translated over into cycles because this this look would have never happened if i hadn't spent all my time using octane and learning how to really maximize my renders in octane and it, it just shows that it doesn't matter what render engine you're using the skills that you you learn you can implement them into anything like if this was redshift i feel now i know i can go to redshift i can go to arno i can go to cycle like Eevee I don't know <laughs> I don't really mess with Eevee too much but I know that I can get a really good photogenic looking render out of any render engine I've used 